Okay, so now we have a couple of questions here. These are some miscellaneous questions from basically all of the all the concepts that we have learned in this chapter and um, we will get to them one by one. So we have basically three lines here 2x plus y you have 2x plus y minus 3 is equal to 0 and 5x plus ky plus ky minus 3 is equal to 0 and you have 3x minus y 3x minus y minus 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 and these lines are basically concurrent lines these are concurrent lines and what that means is that basically if, if you have three or more concurrent lines um, if you have I suppose concurrent can be I, I suppose the word concurrent can also be used in the care in the case of not in the case of two lines because if you have two lines you usually say intersecting lines for example and then there is a point of intersection but concurrent means that i th i suppose it's used in the in the case of lines when the number of lines is at least uh, three meaning that um, you could have for example this line over here and this line over here and this line over here and you can see that let's say this is l1 this is l2 and this is l3 and all the three lines have basically have um, have the same um, i mean they they have one 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 single point uh, which is common to the three lines meaning that l1 and, and l2 have a point of intersection as p for example and p is also a point on the line l3 meaning that the three lines have just have just intersected intersected one another at one single point and these are these are supposed these are called concurrent lines so so now what you can do and there is a there is there is also there is also one some 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 sort of definition over here that says that three lines are said to be concurrent if they pass through a common point that is point of intersection of any two lines on the th lies on the third line meaning that the point of intersection of any of the two lines lies on the third line so those are called concurrent lines so so now if the three lines are concurrent you can you can imagine that uh, you can imagine that for example this line over here if i call it number one and if i call this number two and if i call this number three um, then of course you can use you can basically think of for example these two lines or these two lines doesn't really matter or but what this has to be there because you want to find the value of k over here i forgot to say this so since you want to, to, to find the value of k over here, I, I use, for example, 5x plus ky minus 3 is equal to 0. And here I write 3x minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. And, and so what I can do here is that there is a, there is a method of there is a method of solving these um, systems of equations systems of equations in two variables these linear systems which is called the cross multiplication method i have actually forgotten what that is or how that works but it seems that it seems that it, it works this way meaning that for example let's say that you have um one and three 
So over here, if I if I if I try to solve, if I try to solve, for example, these two, for example, together, I'm going to have a k over here, and of course, I wouldn't know the value of the of k uh, because. Um, because suppose that, for example, suppose that I write, for example, I I suppose that I multiply this this equation by um, by a factor of three, I would get I would get fifteen x and plus three k y minus nine is equal to zero, and then multiply this equation by a factor of five, I would get fifteen x minus uh, minus five y and negative 10 is equal to 0 okay and then if I change the sign over here and if I added these together I would get for example um, for example 3ky 3ky uh, and that is supposed to be equal to 3ky for example plus 5ky minus 19 is equal to minus 19 is equal to 0 and so I wouldn't be able to, to to figure out the value of y here so what I need to do is that is that first I need to find that point of intersection and then and then uh, once I know the point of intersection then x and y are known to me and then I can use it to find k over here now, if you want to, you can, for example, take equation 1 and 3 over here, take, write it as 2x plus y minus 3 is equal to 0, and 3x minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. And, uh, and you can, I have forgotten, there is a method, I, I do remember that method, but it's a, it's a, it's a long process and then, I mean, you have to write, you have to set up your equations in a particular way. And then you can write, for example, x over some something over here is equal to this ratio is equal to y over some ratio over here, which is equal to, for example, 1 over some ratio over here. And then that way you will be able to solve the solve for x and y in, in a system like this. But we will we will solve these two equations in 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 the normal way, meaning that I can simply add these two equations together. These two will cancel out. I have five x minus five is equal to zero, so five x is equal to five. That means that x is equal to one. That means that x is equal to one. And then. And then x is equal to 1 and then I pick any of these two equations for example 2x plus y is minus 3 is equal to 0 now if x is equal to 1 this becomes 2 plus y minus 3 is equal to 0 5 plus y is equal to 0 and y is equal to negative 5 so so your x is so basically then your x and y your x and y over here becomes basically 1 and 1 comma negative 5. Mm. I don't, did I make a mistake over here? So 2x plus y minus 3 is equal to 0. I see, I'm sorry. Sorry. So here I have 2 minus 3 is negative 1 plus y is equal to 0. So y is equal to 1. So then your x and y becomes 1 and 1. 1 comma 1. So now that I have this, I have my x and y, I can put it in, in this, in the equation that, that basically where you have to be, where, where, where I have my k and calculate my k over here. I have 5x plus ky minus 3 is equal to 0. 
So then that is 5 times 1 is equal to 5 plus k times y is equal to k minus 3 is equal to 0 and k 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 plus 2 is equal to 0 and that means that k is equal to negative 2. So that means that if k is equal to negative 2 then these three lines are going to be concurrent meaning that they will have a single point of they, they will have the, the three of the, the basically the three of them will have a single point of a single point of intersection okay so that is that and we have another question over here find the distance of a line from the point measured along the along the line making an angle of 135 degrees with the positive x-axis okay so there is another question find the distance of the line so your line is 4x minus y is equal to 0 4x minus y is equal to 0 you want to find the distance of this line from this point from 4 comma 1 4 comma 1 measured find the distance of the line from the point measured along a line measured along the line making an angle of 135 degrees with the positive x-axis well, I don't understand this question Find the distance of the line from the point four comma one measured measured along the line making an angle of I see. I see. So the question is a little bit, a little bit confusing. So you want to find the distance of the distance of, of this line 4x minus y is equal to 0. 4x minus y is equal to 0 from this point 4 comma 1. 4 comma 1, but not the perpendicular distance, but the but the distance measured along the line making an angle of 135 degrees with the positive x-axis meaning that let's say that you have a so this is 90 and this is basically I mean each of these is basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so 6 times 15 I suppose is 6 times 15 is equal to 90 so each of these is 15 degrees so 1 so this is 90 and then 135 is going to give me so this is 30 degrees so this is 30 degrees so somewhere over here but not quite I mean somewhere over here is is the line that I'm looking for so this line over here is making approximately an angle of 135 degrees with the positive direction of the of the x-axis okay so that is basically the line and this angle over here is 135 degrees and well the point 4 comma 1 the point 4 comma 1 is let's say that this is 1 2 3 4 4 comma 1 is 4 comma 1 is this point over here and is this point over here this is 4 comma 1 
and the line that we have over here 4x minus y is equal to 0 you have negative y is equal to negative 4x that means that y is equal to 4x so the uh, 1 2 3 and 4 so this is going to be that line that that line over there so this is basically 4x minus y 4x minus y is equal to 0 and now if you were to and of course I did this wrong I have to I have to basically do it in such a way that that this that this angle is along this this point actually not over there okay so I apologize for this now if I were to find the distance of this point from this line I would just simply for example assuming that this is a 90 degree angle I would just simply basically use the formula that we have over here I will just simply use this formula which is basically um, d is equal to basically um, the the absolute value of ax1 plus b y1 plus c over the over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus b squared so I would use this formula but I cannot use this formula because because what I want to do now is that I want to to find the I want to find the distance along some along some angle which is along some line that makes an angle of 135 degrees with the positive direction of the x-axis meaning that for example if I assume that this is 135 degrees or so so then for example I want to I want to measure it along this along this line over here and so suppose that for example this is an angle of 135 degrees and now this this angle I mean the I've, I've drawn the, the angle along the same point and so what I'm looking for is basically this 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 distance over here from this point suppose that this is for example call it p4 comma 1 and if I call this point for example m I'm looking for this for this uh, distance pm okay so what I'm going to do now in order to do that is what you can do is um, Okay, so now how what how we can basically solve this problem it takes a few steps to solve the problem meaning that basically you're looking for this for this for this distance pm so how you can do that is that you can you need to basically find what I'm going to do is that I'm going to find uh, the I do need to have the I do need to have the coordinates of this point M and in order to have the, 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 the coordinates of point M I do need to have the I do need to have the, the equation of this line over here so as you can see this is this is a normal line that basically makes an makes an angle of 135 degrees with the positive direction of the x-axis and it also intersects the, the this line over here at, at this point M so so if I have the equation of this line if I have the equation of this line for example call it L1 and if I call this L2 if I have the equation on, of L1 and L2 and put it in a system of equations I will be able to find their port their their point of intersection their point of intersection is going to be point M and once I have the I have the the coordinates of point M and the, the coordinates of point P I already have then I can use the, the distance formula to calculate the distance between P and M 
So that's what you need to do. So first we need to find the first we need to find the the equation of this line L1. So to find the equation of the line to find the equation the equation of L1 so you need to write y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 and so you you do need one point on the line which you can take for example 4 comma 1 so 4 comma 1 is already what we have and also the 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 slope of the line so the slope of the line you know what sort of angle it makes with the positive direction of the x-axis and so you know that m is equal to tan of theta which is equal to tan of 135 degrees now, 135 degrees is the same thing as um, um, is the same thing as basically 90 plus 45 degrees so you would have basically some some angle over here and this is 135 degrees and you know that the tan of um, basically uh, the sine of 135 degrees is the same as uh, the sine of 135 degrees 100, 135 degrees is, is the same as the sine of 45 degrees and the cos of 135 degrees you can write negative cos of uh, 45 degrees so then you can say that based on this you can say that tan of 135 degrees is equal to negative tan of 45 degrees because we have this negative sign over here and tan is nothing but sine over cos so now negative tan of 45 degrees is equal to negative 1 so tan of tan of 135 degrees is equal to negative 1 is equal to well let's call it m1 for example so so your m1 or m in this equation m is equal to negative 1 so then uh, you can you can basically go over here and write this equation as y minus 1 is equal to negative 1 times x minus 4 which is the same thing as y minus 1 is which is 4 minus x and then you can say that y is equal to negative x is equal to negative x and then 4 plus 1 is equal to 5 so the equation of this line over here is is basically y is equal to negative x plus 5 so that is the equation of this line now what you need is again um, the point of intersection of of this line which is 4x minus y is equal to 0 and this line which is y is equal to negative x plus 5 and in order to 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 find that you can write this uh, this line as 4x minus y is equal to 0 and this line you can write it as you can write it as uh, well this is neg y is equal to negative x plus 5 and so you can write it as y plus x minus 5 is equal to 0 and so you can write this as x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0 and so if you basically somehow uh, if you add these two equations together you will get 5x 5x basically minus 5 is equal to 0 that means that 5x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1 now you can take for example this equation over here 4x minus y is equal to 0 and put x is equal to 1 here so 4 minus y is equal to 0 that means that 4 is equal to y so so this point over here point m is nothing but 1 comma 4 1 comma 4 so now you know the basically the the coordinates of of this point and you know the coordinates of this point so now you can simply find it 
meaning that using the distance formula, you know that AB is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. And uh, so the two points that, that, that we're looking at is 1 comma 4 and 4 comma 1. So then you just simply write, write, write for example, PM. PM is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1, so 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 whole squared plus 1 minus 4 whole squared which is equal to 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, 3 squared is equal to 9 and this is negative 3, negative 3 is 9 that is the square root of 18 that is the square root of 18 which is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 2 which is the same thing as 3 square root of 2. 3 square root of 2 units is the, is the distance between these two points. So these are, uh, of course, these are a little bit time, time consuming, but um, you would not, of course, learn mathematics if you don't, uh, if you don't, if you're not willing to give it the time that it, that, that, that it, well, it deserves or, or, the time that is supposed to be given to it. There is no other way, really. And, but, um, uh, there is, there is also one more, I mean, of course, it does take time to learn mathematics at, at least the basic high school mathematics properly. But, um, it doesn't, I mean, it would not take you more than probably Because you know that basically the basic mathematics, which is, which is, I mean, the parts that are really important from, from the, from the first grade all the way through the 12th grade that, that, that you have. And then after that, you have the university and college mathematics and things like that. These are basically, these go from, you have class six, you have class seven, you have class eight, you have class nine, 10, 11, and 12. And this one you can do it in a, probably, if you want to do it really well. And assuming that, for example, during that time interval, you don't do anything else except for working on this, that which would be, for example, working like, for example, five, six, seven, eight hours a day. This would take you probably a month. This would take you not more than a month. This would take you not more than a month, not more than a month, not more than a month. This would take you not more than a month. This probably a month or so. A little bit more, but then you can, you can basically, uh, but, but then over here you, you will have, you will have some time left. So you can, you can think of this as one as well. And this would take you, this would take you basically uh, around two months. I would say around two months. And I'm and I'm assuming that you want to do this using the using the the mathematics that is uh, that is that is basically taught in 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 the Indian NCERT system. There is this, there is a system called NCERT. So these NCERT system, this, this system over here is a, is a basically, is you can go to basically NCERT dot NIC dot, dot in textbook dot textbook can see the, the address up here. And this is the National Council of Education Research and Training of India. They have put all of their books online over here they, 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 these are really great books for learning physics and learning mathematics learning probably biology chemistry and so on and so forth you can of course the, download these books free of cost there is no cost uh, basically uh, there is no cost tied to any of these books for, so for example you can go for class six over here and the subjects you have 
They have many different things like Hindi, English, Mathematics, Social Studies, Sanskrit, Science, and Urdu, which are basically, if you're interested in mathematics, then you can, these are basically, this, these are, I suppose, the same books in three different languages. This is in Urdu, this is in Hindi, and this is in English. So then, if you go for this book, you can see that you have the, all of the mathematics that you need for if you want to become a, for example, a data scientist, you want to become a computer engineer, you want to be a software engineer, you want to be, I don't know, you want to be a physicist, you want to be whatever you want to be, you do need these chapters, all of these chapters, worked out really, really well. Because, for example, this is where you learn what multiplication is. And you don't want to miss that. Most people might think that, for example, multiplication, division, subtraction, these are nests, these are basically simple things, but they are not. Because, because, uh, for example, uh, Newton could basically figure out, um, basically, Newton could figure out um, calculus because he knew he actually he could actually understand the the the, the basic uh, the basic basic the um, the basic operations in mathematics, which is simply multiply addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you understand these four, you do understand a whole lot about mathematics, and and of course, they seem to be simple things. They are not. They are, I mean, they, they could have many different dimensions. You could study them. You could, you could, I don't know if, if there is any, for example, research work on this, on this kind of thing. But of course, they are the very basics of mathematics. And then, for example, you can, you can take this book and then, and of course, these are the same books that I'm using along all of these videos. And you can download the book over here, or you can open the chapters over here. And there you have your book. And these are everything that you need to know, for example, about numbers, and so on and so forth. So, so if you do this, basically, if you do this, then you will have you will have basically one, two, three, four, five, six, six plus two, eight months. Eight months and 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 these books that I sh that I just showed you, uh, I close the tab. The books that I just showed you, if you learn those books, you already know a lot about mathematics. I mean, compared to many other education systems, because mathematics in India is taken very 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 seriously, and of course it 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 would take you a, a long time to. Uh, I mean, a lot of time to, not a long time, but a lot of time to go through those books properly and do every, each and every one of those exercises. But once you know that, once you've done that, you already know a whole lot about mathematics and then you're ready to, for really anything. Uh, I mean, whatever you want to study, then you don't, you, you, you don't basically like any any of the concepts that are necessary in mathematics. So that's basically the whole, the whole story. Now I want to, we have a couple more examples over here. I will take a few minutes rest and I'll be back with you with the next example. Okay, so the next question is, uh, basically, assuming that straight lines work as the plane mirror for a point, the question is assuming that, assuming that, that straight lines, straight lines work as the plane mirror, work as the as the as the plane mirror mirror for 
for a point for a point find the image of the point one comma two find the image of of the point of the point one comma two in the line in the line basically x minus 3y plus 4 is equal to 0. So, so what this means, this whole business of, of plane mirror, of, of a line being working as a plane mirror for a point, what that means is that if you have a, if you have a point, if you have a line over here, for example, y minus 3, x minus 3 by plus 4 is equal to 0 this line is x minus so this this you can write as this you can write as negative 3 y is equal to negative x minus 4 and then you can write this as 3 y is equal to x plus 4 and then you can write this as y is equal to 1 thirds x plus 4 thirds four thirds now what that means is that so the the slope of your line is one thirds and the y-intercept of the line is four thirds so four thirds is basically four thirds is the same thing as one and one thirds one and one thirds would be basically for example let's say that this is one and one thirds over here and the slope one thirds would be basically you would have um, basically for three, for three units of horizontal change, you have one unit of vertical change, meaning that for you would end up for three units of, of horizontal change, meaning that one, two, and three, and then one unit of vertical change, you would end up somewhere over here, and this would be your line. This would be your line. So this is basically the line that we were looking at, x minus 3, y plus 4 is equal to 0. This is the line. Now the point 1 comma 2 is, 1 comma 2 is this point over here. Is this point over here. And, and you want to, basically you want to find the mirror of this, of this point in this line, meaning that, meaning that if you draw a perpendicular from draw perpendicular to this line through this point that would be for example assuming that this is perpendicular the other point that you're looking for or the image of this point in this line is going to be a point which is which has the same distance if I call this for example p p1 comma 2 the other point for example if I if you call it q is going to have and if if this point over here is called for example m then the other point is will have the same distance on the other side of the line which means that q is going to which means that basically um which means that basically pm is equal to mq pm is equal to mq and also and also basically this this um, and also basically MQ MQ uh, I'm sorry PQ which is this line segment over here PQ is perpendicular to to the line to the line let's call it L for example to the line L meaning that these two are perpendicular so that means that M is actually the midpoint of PQ so now you want to find the, the coordinates of this point Q. So what you can do is that if you, if you find the, 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 um, the, the equation of this line, you can easily find the equation of this line over here. And, um, basically, uh, if you find the equation of this line, you will be able to find the, the point of intersection of the two lines because you have you already have this, this line over here. The equation is known to us. So then we'll be able to find the point of intersection of the two lines, which is M. 
once we know that the, the, the point, once, once we know the coordinates of m, then we know what pm is, then based on that we can, we can calculate, we can calculate mq on the same line, and so that would give us the, the coordinates of q. So that's what we need to do. So then what you need to do here is first find the coordinates of the, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the equation of this line segment, for example, or line or whatever we want to call it, mq, for example. And uh, you do know that uh, one point on this line is basically 1, 2, 1, 2, and the slope of this line is basically, uh, since the line is perpendicular to this line, I can write this, I can, the, the slope of this line is, 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 um, so the slope of, the slope of L is going to be equal to M1, for example, which is negative A to B. So negative A to B is the same thing as negative 1 to negative 3, which is equal to 1 thirds. So this is the, this is the, this is the slope of this line, which is equal to one third. Now, if I call the if I call the 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 slope of this line over here PQ, if I if I call the slope of this line as M two, as M two, then I can write then I can write M one times M two is equal to negative one because they are perpendicular. Now m1 is equal to one third, and m2 is basically what we want to find, and the product of them is negative one. So that means that m2 is equal to negative one over one third, which is equal to negative three. So m2 is equal to m2 is equal to negative three. Negative three. So now you can find you can write an equation for this line meaning that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So y minus 2 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 1, and y minus 2 is equal to negative 3x plus 3, and y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. So that is the equation of this line. y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. Now I have the point, I have basically the equation of this line, I have the equation of this line, so I can write, I can basically set up a system of equations, y minus, th x minus 3, y plus 4 is equal to 0, and this line becomes basically y minus, y is equal to negative 3x plus 5, so I can write it as um, negative 3x minus y plus 5 is equal to 0. Negative 3x minus y plus 5 is equal to 0. Negative 3x minus y plus 5 is equal to 0. And so this is a system of equations. I can simply, I can simply basically multiply 1 by, by a factor of 3, for example. 1 times 3 and I will get 3x, 3x minus 3y, sorry, 3x, I can write 3x minus 9y plus 12 is equal to 0, and negative 3x minus y plus 5 is equal to 0. Now if I add these two equations, I will get negative 10y plus 17 is equal to 0, and so negative, negative 10y plus 17. So negative 10y is equal to negative 17. That means that y is equal to 17 tenths. y is equal to 17 tenths. And I can take any of these equations, meaning that, for example, x minus 3y plus 4 is equal to 0. And this is a 4. And so x is x minus 3 times 17 tenths minus 3 times 17 tenths plus 4 is equal to 0. 
and so 3 times 17 is equal to um, 17 times 3 is equal to 21 to 51 so x minus 51 tenths plus 4 is equal to 0 x is equal to 51 tenths minus 4 51 tenths minus 4 is equal to is equal to 10 51 minus 40 which is equal to uh, 11 11 tenths which is equal to 11 tenths so so your x is equal to 11 tenths so the coordinates of this point of this point m the coordinates of, of the point m is basically this so the coordinates of the point m is basically 11 tenths and 17 tenths so then what you need to do is find the distance between between p and m find that the, 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 the and and the distance is of course a the the the, the what do you call it the the perpendicular distance so the per, the 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 basic the point m is 1 comma 2 and point m is basically 11 tenths and 17 tenths 17 tenths and let me see 11 tenths is one point something and 17 tenths is basically 1.7 okay that does make sense because this 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 the height of the point becomes 1.7 over here and the and the ordinate or the the, the, the distance from the y-axis is one point something it does make sense okay so then then basically using the 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 the, um, the the distance formula you can say x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared and so basically then pm is going to be equal to the square root of uh, 11 tenths minus 1 whole squared plus uh, 17 tenths minus 2 whole squared okay and uh, and so what this is is basically i can write this as well 11 tenths minus 1 is the same thing as 11 tenths minus 10 tenths which is equal to 1 tenths and 1 tenths whole squared is equal to 1 hundredth 1 hundredth plus 17 tenths 17 tenths minus 2 is the same thing as is basically 17 tenths minus 20 tenths that is equal to 2 so over here you have negative 3 tenths negative 3 tenths and if you if you if you raise this to the second power you will get 9 hundredth 9 hundredth which is equal to to the square root of 10 hundredth 10 hundredth which is basically the square root of 1 tenth and and that is equal to and that is equal to basically uh, the square root of 10 is the square root of 10 is of course you cannot find the square root of 10 so that's 1 over square root of 10 that is 1 over square root of 10 divide by 10 divide by 10 so pm is equal to so that means that pm is equal to 1 over square root of 10 
And then uh, what you can do here, uh, you need to basically find, you need to find a point Now you need to find the distance of a point. You need to find the distance, the, the, per, per, the perpendicular distance of a point from this line, um, whose, uh, basically whose perpendicular distance is one tenth, because this, 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 the, this distance is supposed to be also one over square root of ten. <coughs> So, um, so I could use, for example, I could use, for example, d is equal to the d is equal to the absolute value of a x one plus b y one plus c over over the square root of a squared plus b squared, and. Um, well, the line that I'm looking at is this line over here, x minus 3y plus 4 is equal to 0, so I know a, b, and c. And x1, y1 is x1, y1 is, it's not going to give me x1 and y1. That is going to give me some relationship between x, y, and y1. But that, so what I'm, what I'm going to do is that calculate the, calculate basically x1 and y1 from this, from this formula. And then since we know the, the equation of the line, if I have some relationship between x1 and y1, I can put it in this, in this equation and get the other one. Um, meaning that, Let me see, let me see what I'm doing. I don't, I don't really know what I'm saying here. I don't understand what I'm saying. Mm. So this has to be a point. This has to be a point that has the same distance from point M as, as point, as point P. And it has to be on the, on the same line. So let's do this and say, let's see where that takes us. I'm not really, I, I, I cannot, at this point, I cannot think this through really, but I think it, 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 it's getting us somewhere. But let's see, let's see what happens. So let's, let's say that the, that the distance that we are looking at, the distance of the perpendicular distance is one over square root of 10. So one over square root of 10 is equal to basically I'm, I'm over here, my a is basically 1, my b is negative 3, and my c is equal to 4. So I can write the, abs the absolute value of, the absolute value of a, which is basically 1, times x1, times x1, plus negative 3 times y1, plus uh, c which is equal to 4 c which is equal to 4 over the square root of a and a squared b squared so you have 1 squared plus negative 3 squared so then I can write this as I can write this as the absolute value of x1 minus 3 y1 plus 4 plus 4 over the square root of 1, 3 squared is equal to 9, so plus 9, and that is equal to 1 over the square root of 10. So what that means is that, 
what that means is that um, this is a square root of 10 this is a square root of 10 so I can can cancel them out and so what that means is that the absolute value of x1 minus 3 times y1 plus 4 is equal to 1 and so that means that now you can we have already talked about the absolute value of the function and how you solve those equations uh, so what that means is that you can write x1 minus 3y1 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 1 or you can say x1 minus 3 times y1 plus 4 is equal to negative 1 in this case you will get x1 minus 3 times y1 and 1 comes to the other side, ne side negative 1 so 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 is equal to 0 and over here you that that will give you what what it gives you is basically x1 minus 3 times y1 and plus 5 is equal to 0 so as as i mentioned before this these are two different and of course it's going to give you two points it, it's giving you two points because because um, because well it, it gives you some point on this side of the line and it gives you some point on the other side of the line because uh, because this is a this is a formula that basically gives you the 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 basically the um, this basically what this formula does it gives you the perpendicular distance of some point of some point from some line and if it if you give it if you basically if you give it the distance then of course it gives you two sets of x x y y x y and y ones because because now there are two possibilities either the point is on this side of the line or on the other side of the line so now that we have this thing over here i can erase all of this and then use this and then use this over here in the equation of in the equation of the line that we already have so these you know that these two points these two x1 y ones are on this line and this line which is y is equal to negative 3 x plus 5 so now if I, if I say, and, and if I say that, for example, x1 minus 3, y1 plus 3 is equal to 0. So I can, now I can write x in terms of y. I can write x1 is equal to 3, y1 minus 3. 3, y1 minus 3. And just to, just for the sake of simplicity, I can write this as x is equal to basically 3 times 3 times y minus 3 because well this this point is is of course on this line so it, it could be x and y so now instead of x in this equation i can i can write 3y minus 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 3 so i can write basically y is equal to minus 3x plus 5 now in this equation instead of x i write 3y minus 3 so y is equal to minus negative 3 times 3y minus 3 um, over here I'm sorry y is equal to negative 3 times x which is basically 3y minus 3 and then we have a plus 5 over here so y is equal to negative 9y plus 9 plus 5 so I take this y to the other side. This becomes y plus 9y is equal to 14. And that is 10y is equal to 14. And so y is equal to, y is equal to basically 14 to 10. 14 tenths. And I suppose this is not 14 tenths is basically one point something 
and here is we have to it's it, it is it's giving me exactly the point that I wanted otherwise I could have gotten this point over here which I didn't um, so now if y is equal to 14 14 tenths I can come over here and in the same equation so if if y is equal to 14 tenths I can write 14 tenths in this equation is equal to negative 3x plus 5 so then I can say I can write basically negative 3x is equal to 14 tenths negative 3x is is equal to 14 tenths minus 5 and uh, and so I can write 5 in terms of 10 uh, 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2. 50 divided by 10 is 5, I suppose. 50 divided by 10 is 5. 5 times 10 is equal to 50. So I'm going to write negative 3x is equal to 14 tenths minus 50 tenths. So negative 3x is equal to 50 minus 14 is equal to 20 50 minus 14 is equal to well I have to do this very slowly because my mind is a little bit tired right now so this is a 4 this is a 10 6 36 so that's negative 36 tenths or I can say that or I can say that basically I can cross multiply negative 3 negative 36 is equal to negative negative 30 negative 30 X and so I can cancel these two out and divide by so X is equal to 36 by 30 divide by 2 you will get 18 divide by 2 you'll get 15 divide by 3 you'll get 6 divide by 3 you'll get 5 that, that is 6 fifths x is equal to 6 fifths so that means that the coordinates of this point of this point q the coordinates of this point q are are basically 6 fifths and 14 14 tenths and 14 tenths now 6 fifths is basically a little a little bit over 1 which is this point over here, the, 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 the x coordinate of this point, and 14 tenths is also a little bit over 1, which is basically this point over here. Now, if I, if I take a look at the answer over here, and of course they have written it as 6 fifths, and of course you can simplify this to 7 fifths. You, these, these are the coordinates of the point that that we have that we have over here so as you can see as the names as as the name suggests analytical analytical geometry is both beautiful and it's also well analytical you have to analyze everything and use some relationships and formulas in order to come up with whatever it is that you're looking for and one more thing that the, that I need to that I need to tell you about these about what what we are doing here is that um, basically once you can do this then it then basically then physics is not going to be that difficult because because when you study physics, for example, physics is the study of nature, but of course through mathematics. And for example, you want to find the distance of, for example, some very far away object from the earth, for example, some, for example, the sun or some, some star or whatever that is. So then we use all of these techniques in physics. For example, there is something in physics called parallax. So, for example, the parallax works exactly on the, for example, you will have an object over here and you will have two observatories over here. 
and you observe this object from a very far away for example thousands and millions of kilometers away so this object is away from us and we have for example these two observatories on the earth and you and you observe that object from these two observatories and then and then we use some basically techniques in physics that for example one of them happens to be for example the same thing as analytical geometry meaning that you can imagine that this is a that this is basically a part of a very large circle and then if you know enough about circles and the arcs and the chords and and the and the central angles and so on and so forth and geometry and everything that we're doing here then you will be able to solve physics physics problems like that but then if you don't know if if you haven't learned these things properly then when you get to physics then you will come up with some simple problem like this but if you haven't well learned the, the basics in mathematics then over there you will get stuck so <clears throat> that's basically that so I'm going to stop this video here, end this video here, and then we have a couple more uh, exercises here to solve. Let me see, there is one, two, three. There is only three problems left here, so I will see you in the next video. Thank you.